Welcome back to MeshMesh Studio. So in today's episode, it's gonna be about the new Renaman 22.6 release. So I'm very excited about this new curvature pattern that was released. So let's dive into it now. Okay, so here in uh, Maya 2019, I have a scene here. So it's, it's already rendering here. It's set up here with a layered shader and the curvature pattern to apply two materials. So the classic will be uh, like some kind of uh, copper with uh, uh, like oxidation or something like that. So in my case, I just made a, a layered shader and uh, applied uh, the curvature to drive the mask between here. So let's take a look at that here in action. So we have a, a layered shader. So I have displacement here going and the layered shader. So I have two materials. Let's look at them if I disconnect this mask here. So that's the top one and let's go and disconnect the top layer and I have a uh, like a some kind of copper or something. Build this to back here, enable the top one and hook this up. Let's take this red channel into the mask and then start to look at the curvature. So the curvature you find it here under Renderman Patterns, Pixar, Curvature and that's what I've hooked up here. So let's take this and solo it. Or we can just, let's create a, a, a brand new one, Pixar Curvature, and hook this up instead onto this one there. So that's the default setup here. And it comes here, um, you have first off the output mode is where we will choose concave. That's gonna be uh, concave surfaces and convex gonna be the opposite convex like this both is gonna be uh, add them together you also have a uh, monochrome or uh, if you disable this it's gonna be convex in uh, I'm not sure if it's red or let's go to channel and see uh, view channel red you will get uh, convex in one and concave in the other so yeah that's good if you want to output red green you can then just choose whatever channel you want to isolate so this is probably how i'm gonna do it i'm gonna uh, render out both just in my compositing software if i need to do something or most likely i will bake this out into texture space and use it with texturing so yeah i'm gonna do um, then not monochromatic because then I can't split it. It's gonna be look like this. So I, I want to be able to split it. You have a output gain so you can over crank it, I guess. And you have thresholds here for the bit different ones. So let's take concave here and, and say monochromatic. There you see, start to play with this. So you, you have to dial around there to get this to work. Bias can play with that, see what happens. So it's gonna be, uh, I guess, how much contrast type of uh, effect. And then you have uniform. This is similar to the occlusion, or so we have a cosine or uniform. So cosine spread is gonna be different as well. Another level of complexity here. And then you have max distance. So let's let's try and set this up to something. 0.4 and see what happens. So you get a larger distance there. So let's hook this up again here. So what I did here, I just, um, if I solo this, I just took an exposure and over cranked it even more to something like this. And then I clamped it, clamped it down. And I used this as a mask just to apply like a, a wash of uh, this, you know, patina on top. So if I unsolo this, we can see here that I apply kind of, kind of broad wash of, of this secondary layer there on top. So we can start here if I wanna start to play with the, the look here, set something smaller. It's gonna be in the crevices here. So that's uh, one way to use the curvature and I will most likely just start to use it for breaking out curvature for my texturing mainly because that's uh, something um, that I use a lot in texturing, curvature. So it's gonna be interesting to see what type of quality. So I guess um, now it's, it's pretty low samples here. 
guess when you bake it, you have to increase the samples. Otherwise, it will probably be kind of a noisy result. So, um, oh, there you have clamp output as well. I didn't see that. So I shouldn't have had to clamp my network there, maybe. But yeah, I overcramped with exposure. So, so yeah, that's kind of uh, the basics of that. So let's just apply this onto something hard surface now and see how that looks as well. So I have the curvature, I feed it into a invert here to just have a mask. And I actually here have also, if I look at this, like a secondary pattern here that I remap here. So I get some contrasted textures. So this is a piece of wrong cube, so I can apply uh, like a tileable texture. So this is in more terms, this will be like a tree prong projection. And I apply this uh, using a blend here. So let's take a look here at the blend and I use the blend here to just to further treat the edges I guess I need more contrast in the in this but yeah I have it there as a secondary feed it into two textures here so I have a uh, denoising on so it takes away the noise but it also makes it look a little like paint effects or something so that's uh, kind of an example where you can use uh, curvature onto a hard surface hard surface stuff like this yeah, so it's gonna be exciting to test it out now in production and see how it goes. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna test, I haven't done it yet, is to actually bake out this into UDIMS and apply it in my texturing. It's gonna be interesting to see what bake times I get. So yeah, so that's the briefly about how we can use the Pixar Curvature node here in the new Renderman 22.6. So yeah, I'm excited and uh, if you want to support my channel, consider subscribing and hit that bell notification so you don't miss when I go live or do one of these tutorials. See you in the channel. Bye bye.